So imagine, and a good way to practice this shot is to actually place a tee in the ground quite high and then imagine you're hitting it off that tee. That's, what the, that's the kind of motion and the kind of depth that you want with this shot. So I'm gonna try and feel like I'm hitting a draw. Uh, normal ball position, everything pretty standard. I'm just going to feel like I'm drawing it, clipping it off the top. Welcome to the channel guys. My name's Ryan Moke and today we're gonna to talk all things chipping out of the rough. Now there's two things you need to understand about chipping out of the rough and that's identifying the lie that it's in and how that ball will react. The other thing is adapting your normal chipping technique to the lie that you have. Let's get stuck in. Now here's a stat that might blow your mind. 88% of the time we do not chip off fairway grass. So what that means is 88% of the time we are chipping out of bunkers, we are chipping out of rough, we are not on perfect fairway lies. I see so many golfers practicing off perfect lies with 30 or 50 balls, grooving their technique. While this is an important factor for sure, when we are in the rough, we have to adapt what we do with our typical technique and apply that to the golf ball sitting how it is. The other thing we need to identify when coming out of the rough is we start to lose friction when there is something between the ball and the club face. In this instance, it's grass, and when there's grass between the ball and the face, the ball doesn't spin as much, and it pops up a little higher than normal. And one of the biggest factors when chipping out of the rough is you need to be able to identify how to play the ball out of certain lies. And I'm gonna go through four different lies for you today that I commonly see when I'm playing or when I'm teaching the game that students are faced with. Now, the first lie that I come across all the time in the rough is a ball that's actually sitting quite nicely on top. Now this ball will come out and react similar to a fairway shot where the ball stays somewhat low and spins quite a bit. That's obviously providing that you've got a decent wedge and a decent ball. If you're not using those factors, your ball might be popping up regardless. The second ball that I see is one that sits just ever so slightly in the rough. It kind of looks like it's half in and half out. When we place the ball or when we place the club next to that ball, you can see that there's quite a lot of uh, grass between the ball and the club face. So what is going to happen there is we're gonna lose that friction. The ball's not going to spin as much. It's going to pop up a little higher. You have to take into account that when you're chipping this golf ball. The third lie that I see is when the ball sits right in the bottom of that grass. So basically what we see is the ball has reached the bottom, whereas the first ball was sitting on top, we're able to get the club underneath. The second ball was sitting kind of half and half. There's still room for that club to get under the ball and pop up. Whereas this lie, you can see that that ball is sitting way into the grass there. And it's very difficult to get any type of consistency when we're coming out of this type of lie. The final lie that we get is depending on the grass type, you may get a ball to sit right on top of the grass. And what happens there is if we get the club into the ground a bit too much, we actually end up hitting the top of the club face and the ball only goes about half the distance we want. So what I'm gonna do for you now is I'm gonna hit a couple of these shots and you're going to see the ball flights and I'm gonna talk you through how I adapt our swing to suit the lie. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna have the first ball just sit on top of the grass. And this is a, a, a lie that basically if we, we, we would consider a pretty good lie in the rough. And the good thing about this lie is, is we can get some predictability with strike. And the reason being is we can see most of the golf ball. We can get to the back of the ball quite easily. So the thing about this lie is I don't have to change too much. I can stick with my normal uh, chipping motion, which is ball in the middle of my feet, ever so slightly back perhaps, pretty neutral setup. I'm just going to feel like I, I hit a normal chip shot. Now this should come out fairly low or medium flight uh, and just release up there to the flag. Not the best kick, but you can see there that that ball kind of came out a little lower than you would expect. And I actually felt like that had quite a bit of spin on it. It, uh, it landed just off the green and hasn't really released that much. Uh, so some nice predictability there. Now the second lie we're gonna go through is one that's sitting half and half. So we basically get that ball to sit just in the grass there a little bit. So it's not sitting on top, but it's not sitting all the way to the bottom. Now, the good thing about this lie is it actually helps me get the ball in the air. I don't need to help this ball in the air with an open club face or anything like that because the, the, the 
the grass between the, the ball and the face is going to help get that ball up in the air. So the only thing I would do here is basically I, I need to just get my, my depth a little bit deeper. So what do I mean by depth? Well, if I was just clipping a tee off the top of this grass, that would be very shallow. If there was a tee way down in that grass, I would need to actually get that club into the grass. And that would be, uh, you know, not a lot of depth and a lot of depth. So I need to increase the depth for this one ever so slightly. So normal ball position, maybe a fraction more back than, than my normal chip shot. Uh, square club face, and I'm going to trust that this ball just pops up just a little bit for me. It won't spin as much and it's going to roll uh, the rest of the way to the hole. So I'm gonna set up to this ball, square stance, increase depth. Okay, that was a little bit short and I actually got the depth a little bit wrong there. I, I did feel like I hit that a little bit high on the face and you can see that's, you know, it's quite short of the hole, but obviously for, for today's demonstration, I'm not trying to get it too close. Uh, but that one, I just felt like I increased the depth a little bit too much. And that's where identifying these lies are really important. Uh, there was obviously still quite a lot of grass under there and I went a little bit too deep, but that was still pretty good. It popped up nicely. It did what I wanted it to do. I just mishit it ever so slightly. The third lie is the one that sits way down. So what we're going to do is we're gonna find the bottom of this grass and put the ball there. So you can see it's, it's really, really hard to actually see that golf ball now. So what I now have to do, in, in a way this is not a hard shot, but it's not easy either. The predictability of this shot is the fact that it's on the ground. And as you could see from the previous shot, I didn't know how much grass was underneath the ball. So I got it wrong just a little bit. But this one here is on the ground. So what I can basically feel myself do is I can literally come through and get that bounce to work into the bottom of the ground. I wanna get the depth to hit the ground under the ball. And if I take a little bit of a divot, that's, that's okay. I am going to play this with a slightly open face only because I don't want the leading edge to dig in. I still want this ball to pop up nicely. I'm going to increase the speed of my golf club here because I need to get it through the turf. But this is a little hit and hope. Uh, I mean, if I'm faced with this shot on the, on the golf course, I'm just trying to get this on the green if I can. Uh, so here we go. So middle, middle ball position, maybe ever so slightly back. I'm going to widen my stance a little bit because I've got more swing, open the face, and I'm going to feel like my depth is more into the ground. So <laughs> that one's even surprised me. So you can see there that I've gone after that, I've created quite a big divot there and I kind of had to because the ball was on the ground. But if you noticed, I kept the speed up the ball landed, I think it was just short of that, that ball that's just off the green. It's continued releasing to about two or three feet. Um, so that, that was a really helpful thing. So the ball in the rough, when it's really deep, we have to go after it a little bit more. Thankfully that worked out, but that's how we'd play that lie. Now the final lie, depending on the grass that you play on, is one that just sits way up on the grass. Now this one here, I'm gonna try not to touch this grass here, but this one here is sitting way on top. So again, remember that second shot I hit, I got the depth a little wrong. So if you can imagine how much grass is under this ball, if I get down into this ground a bit too much, this, I'm, gonna, I'm going to hit the top of this club face. So what I really want to try and do here, or what I try and feel, is I try and feel like I'm hitting a draw, a very shallow draw, and just clipping this ball off the top of the, uh, the, the, top of the grass. So imagine, and a good way to practice this shot is to actually place a tee in the ground quite high and then imagine you're hitting it off that tee. That's, what the, that's the kind of motion and the kind of depth that you want with this shot. So I'm gonna try and feel like I'm hitting a draw, uh, normal ball position, everything pretty standard. I'm just going to feel like I'm drawing it, clipping it off the top. You can see there that, you know, I hit it a bit too hard there, but you can see the type of motion that I used there. Very much a draw motion. There was very, very little depth to my club there. It just clipped it off the top. And that's how I would play a ball that's sitting right up uh, on the rough. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. 
just a reminder, you have to be able to adapt what you do with the golf club. You have to adapt your golf swing to the scenario that you're facing. And more importantly, you have to be able to identify the lie that you are in and how the ball is going to react out of that lie. If you enjoyed today's video, please press like and subscribe. Comment below, how do you get out of these types of lies? Till next time, thanks for watching.